you just heard from Karen, who's from the future. Unfortunately, I'm so last century. And in fact, I'm sort of quite daunting because pretty much all of you are this century. And that means when the clock turned over to the year 2000, your parents were out partying and celebrating. And we couldn't imagine the life that you would be experiencing right now. But sometimes pictures are just easier to understand than words. So we're going to start by just taking a look at the world as it is today. So my job is to prepare you for the world today, but the world that you're entering tomorrow. And some of the themes you would have seen there is that simple, repetitive tasks are increasingly in the domain of algorithms, automation, and robotics. And so what we need to think about is that what does it truly mean to be human as we head towards, in 72 Mondays, the year of 2020? Now, that's a really futuristic number for, this, for those of us who were born last century. We just can't even imagine this world you'll be entering. What we do know is you're going to have to develop yourself as a whole and not about the subjects you learn. Because knowledge is now in the domain of the latest algorithm. It's a Google search away. What we need to find is what do we do with problems? How do we solve them? And how do we count down to your future? How do we imagine it when you're going to be going into roles which are incredibly flexible, adaptable, changing, and often project-based? The defined terrain of a job is diminishing rapidly. And so you have to think about a career that will change and morph many times over your lifetime. How many people here, if any, were born around 2007? A few of you, maybe, a few at the back, fantastic. So half of you 
and Australia will live to be 104. Think about that. Every year, the age of longevity is increasing and increasing. And it wasn't that long ago, even just 100 years ago in this country, the life expectancy of a man was just 48. And today, it's closer to 85. So we're going to have multiple careers. But we cannot ignore technology. You'll hear a lot about it today. The most important thing is not to be afraid of it. You are a product of this generation. I have every reason to be more intimidated. I'm from the analog world. Things are done the industrial model. You were born into this new world. You don't have to undo what you know to reskill. You're part of this future already. But you do need to think about how technology will influence the types of jobs you're thinking about. Tech is not about IT. Tech is about what you do to find information, to collaborate, to research, to connect. It's about feeling really comfortable understanding what computation can do for you. So if you don't like the idea of spending time in front of a machine or a computer, you must broaden your views and understand how technology influences every role, whether you're going into professional services, banking, logistics, manufacturing, entertainment. You have to think about data. We have to think about generational changes. There's so much that's happening we have to think about. Who knows what this city is? Shanghai, this is a real city, right? It looks just like this. Maybe it's a bit bluer than it normally looks. The world's advancing quickly, and because we're in a na nation here, you don't necessarily see these big changes because we don't have the huge populations that the rest of the world have. When I was young, the world population was three and a half billion people. Who can tell me what it is today? Yeah, somewhere just a little short of eight. So the population of the world's doubled already. So you think about that, twice as many people on this planet in just my lifetime. So you are part of the largest generational grouping the world's ever seen. Half of the entire planet are now under 30. So for us who are older, we look at you and think, you have got the biggest momentum behind you because you know digital, you know technology, you're comfortable with it, you think about sharing differently, you, want it, you like equi equity and equality and fairness, you think about sustainability and the environment, and you're changing the rules because actually people over the age of 55 only make up 15% of the world. Not many people understand that, how young and powerful you are. So let's go back to that population growth. What is this curve called? Does anyone know what this is called? An exponential curve. The same way that technology is exponential, computer processing power is exponential, what we're seeing here is the world population growth as it heads towards nine or 10 billion people. The problems you get to solve will be at scale. You'll be able to think about things around health, education, about feeding the world in different ways. We have to think bigger and bolder, and you get to make those rules. So I think the school system right now, it's pretty tough. The teachers are under pressure, there's changes going on, new subjects coming in, they know they're preparing you for new, a new world, but the system is like a samurai traditional, do it the way we've always done it, dress in this particular way, act in this particular way, all go to university. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to build optionality into our lives, because not everybody fits that mould. We have to think about what is the best pathway for you as an individual. Is it better for you to go and explore the world, be an entrepreneur, go and just get some work experience before you make big decisions? Because in this traditional samurai world, you're ninjas. You can do things by stealth. You can come in quietly and make other plans. You can be a student and also have a company. You can be working and developing skills and volunteering while you're also passing your exams. Keep your options open. Don't think about the world in a train track and linear way, but the influence of exponential potential. This is one of the biggest challenges you'll face. Parents, like me, 
are really well-meaning. If education served them really well, the chances are they're going to ask you to reflect their schooling. Do what I did, sit down past the exams, do the process that got me to where I am. But the world's not that same place. And so you need to make sure the choices you're making are not just influenced by those closest to you, but by many sources. Go out and find many opinions. Talk to lots of people about what you love doing, what you're good at, types of things you get excited about, and things that are just not right for you. As you start to enter the workforce as Generation Z, you're asking for different things. I have three of my team, a Generation Z, and they really focus on fulfillment of great work, purpose, vision. They want to make sure what they do has got value, not just to themselves, but to the community. So employers are starting to think differently. We also know that you're strong on social responsibility, which is really admirable. So how does that fit? If your driver is social responsibility, how does that fit in a large corporate environment if that's where you're heading? Do those two things sit comfortably or do they conflict? You have to ask yourself those questions and have to think about what your body, your brain is saying about your future. I know you're probably heading into exams right now, a lot of you and you're probably sort of really sweating it about passing these exams, but you have to get beyond thinking about subjects. Subjects are great. We love to be able to see how we're progressing, to build knowledge. But actually, I can tell you right now, I have never walked into a company when they've said to me, right, how old are you? Okay, well, you're going to be grouped into this group of people of your age, and we're going to put you into a room and give you access to no information at all. And then we're going to sit you down with a pen and a paper for three hours, no connectivity, and we're going to assess how good you are as an employee. You imagine a job like that. Would you take it? No. <laughs> so we have to see there is this disconnect from a traditional education model to where things are going. No one's to blame. You're purely a product of a time between these two worlds. So you, you need to work in the system you're in, but you need to be ready for the system you're outside of. And that's this new world. So think about your development of you as an individual. What skills can you bring this world? How will you stand out amongst others? How will your CV or the thing you put across the desk to an employer reflect who you are and what you stand for? So these are some of the suggestions I think you want to be thinking of. First of all, how many people here do any form of voluntary work? Fantastic. Now make sure you keep doing that, not because you need it for points at school, but because you find things that are interested. Has anyone here ever worked in a startup? A few. Have you created your own one? Nice work. Create a startup. There is no better time to start a small business than when you're at school because you've got no risk. You don't have a family or a mortgage. You can do it lean, you can be online, you can do it between, and you learn such incredible skills. How many people here have a part-time job? So given the age group in here, a lot more of you probably could do with getting out and getting that experience. These are the things that will make a huge difference when you start looking at your future career. The great thing is we're going into this world of the gig economy. So already it's becoming one of the major ways young people are choosing to work, meaning they have different jobs in a week, not a nine-to-five job in one company. So think about you might work two days a week doing contracting, two days a week you might be a designer or a developer, and one day a week you work in a voluntary organization or a startup. 50% of millennials in America already work this way, and it's increasingly happening around the world. Your parents were told freedom was a house, a car, and a job for life. You don't want a house. You want to share a car, like an Uber, and you want a job that fits your lifestyle. So think about those differences. You have subscription services, shared services, and shared jobs. These are completely different to the way your parents thought about ownership and access. 
qualifications are being questioned more and more for the value because of the cost and the output that you get from them. So truly understand before you commit huge amounts of money to a program that it's going to achieve what you're looking for. Is it better to take some time out first before you make that huge financial con con contribution or commitment? Not saying don't do it, just be going into it incredibly well informed. Think about your competency and your collaboration skills. Embrace diversity. Hang out with people who are not like you. Find new ways of thinking. Because if you all think in the same way, it's like drinking the same Kool-Aid, you're not going to grow and develop as individuals. So make sure you've got lots of diverse friends. Most importantly, this is a time for you to have fun. You get to write your own rules. You are sitting in a system that can be complex and traditional, but you are part of the first generation of real rule breakers in the digital world. Thanks so much. Thank you.